Welcome to Series 2 of The Core with Nathan Fowkes, hosted by Bobby Chu. Nathan Fowkes has been one of the top concept artists in the entertainment industry for over 20 years. His credits include The Prince of Egypt, How to Train Your Dragon, and Wonder Park. In this mini-series, Nathan will get to the core of concepts and ideas that he teaches in his schoolism classes. We hope you enjoy it. Hey Nathan, thank you so much for your time. I want to talk to you about landscape sketching in watercolor and gouache. I know that's one of your passions. However, you work on fantastical or whimsical themes a lot. Or even if you don't, it's generally all animated movies. So I want to ask you, what do you gain from landscape sketching besides something cool and fun to do? Yeah, excellent question, because what I feel like I gain is the lack of a formula. Uh, all these places, they're different. They're different moments in time, different times of day, different atmospheric conditions. Uh, I like to you know, get, get around as much as I can and, and have a chance to visit different places that have their own unique flavor. And that gives kind of a, a, a breadth to... Uh, to the experiences that uh, I'm able to have and the paintings that I tend to do. And so that's translated directly over to concept art because concept art requires us to tackle a wide breadth of places, a wide breadth of times of day, atmospheric conditions, uh, just a range across the board. And so the thing that we come up against maybe most often in my landscape sketching class is that landscape sketching is so hard that it's very tempting to want to develop a formula. Just, okay, what, what do I need to do to deal with all of this complexity? And so you find a technique that works for you and no matter where you are or what the place is, or especially the mood, the feeling of the place, you use that exact same technique over and over and over. And uh, I, I feel like even some, uh, some watercolor books have been a little bit guilty of serving up, you know, kind of focusing on the technique of watercolor, serving the technique like a recipe as if it could possibly apply to every situation. So I, I've had to force myself away from that temptation and have a variety of approaches for a variety of subjects. And so I've gotten a little bit frustrated with the typical, traditional, well, you have your palette and there's these cakes of dry color. And sure, you wet them and you buy a good brand and, and make sure you have good pigments, but you spray and wet them and, and let them become workable. But you got to really dig into them and then you put a tinted wash down. You know, you can't get a ton of paint out of that. And so you're left with tinting white paper. The result of that can be absolutely gorgeous, but it only works with certain kinds of subjects. And watercolor almost has become a cliche of it has to be these tinted washes no matter where you are. So in my classes, I insist that we use out of the tube watercolors so that you can really dig in and get whatever color you need, whatever uh, whatever depth of value you need. And we do use watercolors, but I also, we use white opaque gouache so that you can mix your paints just like you would acrylics, just like you would oils. You know, if, if to get a color in oils, you need to mix uh, a purple, a red, and a brown and white to get the color you need, well, I paint watercolors the same way. Uh, because Everyone understands an oil painter can paint any, a skilled oil painter can paint any subject that they need to. But there's this cliche about watercolor has to be this one formula. And so we intentionally push, we, we actually, I, we do that. We do some luminous paintings where we specifically do that technique because it's useful for those circumstances. But then we intentionally do something completely different in the class, in my class after that, where that technique will not work for you. Because if we're going to, you know, this, this beautiful and complex world, if we're going to paint it, we have to have versatility. Uh, a formula is a horrible thing because 
we treat all of the wonderful variety in exactly the same way. So that's the, the big lesson of technique, I think, in watercolor painting. I also love just traditional painting because unlike digital, you have to think ahead. You have to really, really think ahead about all of your steps. There is no undo. And uh, because of that, uh, it helps us to really think even further. Right. Yeah, ab absolutely. That, that undo button is a, is a vi useful and vicious thing. I don't know, Bobby, let me ask you, are, are you like me every once in a while? You'll say something that you were just, you blurt something out that immediately you realize not, not the best thing to say and your hand flickers like control Z. Like you actually want to undo something you said. You actually have a, an impulse that you can control Z real life situations. Yeah. You don't have that, uh, outside of the digital realm and, uh, it forces you to not make, you know, you, you, you make a blunder, whether it's painting or real life, and you learn that hard lesson and you do not make that mistake again. I am guilty of that as well, actually. That's funny that you brought that up. <laughs> well, if you want to learn exactly what we're talking about here, highly recommended Nathan Fowkes, his class on schoolism landscape sketching and watercolor and gouache with Nathan Fowkes. Not only will you learn all the techniques that he has developed over many, many years, but it's also fun and it helps your painting all around, whether it's digital or traditional.